That's after Wednesday's Alan Titchmarsh Show. Wednesday's AT show, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a sparkling wine vineyard, an eco-friendly fuel production line, and a prestigious jam-making business, E-I-E-I-O. Now, then, British agriculture generates about four and a half billion pounds of income each year, but as any farmer will tell you, we shouldn't put all our free-range eggs in one basket. That's why our countryside is teeming with creative, inventive and industrious people keen to make the most of what's around them. Joining me now are three rural entrepreneurs. First up, please welcome the proprietor of Hottie's Logs, John Jardine. <laughs> I'll see you again. Yeah. Now, What's that? Hottie's log. Th this is a Hottie's log, then? It is, it is. It's made from um, what we've got here, which is wood chips and uh, waste sawdust, and we're based on a farm in Suffolk, and we use, actually, um, waste uh, heat from an anaerobic digester to dry the sawdust, and we also use um, the electricity from the digester, which that creates from the farm maize and pig slurry, which it's is... It's almost self-sustaining. Well, though, it is, it? absolutely. It's a renewable fuel from a renewable fuel, really. And how vital is diversifying into this kind of thing for farmers nowadays? I think, you know, with the pressure on agricultural incomes, anything that farmers can, can diversify into is, is mm. really, really good for, good for the countryside. And this would otherwise have been thrown away. It would have been yeah, rubbish. It would absolutely. have been, you know, wasted. So you're making... These are used, what, in, in wood-burning stoves? wood-burning stoves, open fires, stoves, etc. We're also then converting them into a charcoal product, which is for barbecuing. So you're awesome. all year round now, you're not just well, for winter. Well, exactly, that was something... A hottie we isn't just for no, winter, if it's so charcoal, it's, it's a summer, summer It's well. a summer hottie, so... Yeah. But we, 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 so it's sort of an old process which we try to mechanise on the, on the farm, so... Did it work instantly, this idea, or did it take a heck of a lot of refining and sorting out? In a, in a word, no. It didn't, um, yeah. The charcoal's been very, very interesting. It's a very difficult process, and we've... Uh, I went to the Far East to look at some equipment and uh, we've converted it and it actually is now working very well. This process is, has been around for a few years, um, but the technology has been sort of fairly antiquated up to now. Yeah, so, so you brought modern technology to bear. Have, How yeah. does it compare with a, a piece of wood, with a log, in terms of its, the length of its life? It's a good question because, I mean, logs, when people buy your logs, it's, it's down to what moisture content they've yeah. got. Yeah. This product is always 4% moisture, so the actual heat value you get from it is significantly more. So it's yeah. about two and a half to three times out, the actual heat output of an ordinary log, depending on the moisture content. And it's given your farm a shot in the arm. Yeah, I mean, the farm, I'm based on another farm, and it's, you know, it's, we're employing local people. Um, it's, you know, it's great. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Good. Glad it's worked. Great. Thank you very Working much. It's British. Join me now, the owner of, um, I've done the fire, I'm a bit thirsty now, Camel Valley Wine, Bob Lindo. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, good to see you. Thank you for having me. Now, John there is a farmer, you're not. You were an RAF pilot. I was an RAF pilot and I became a farmer um, in 1982, um, what, before I left the RAF. What happened? What happened well, I had a little bit of an accident between then and, uh, and uh, starting properly. I uh, had a mid-air collision and broke my spine. Um, but I, didn't... Just I had a mid-air collision, I broke my spine. <laughs> so I opened a vineyard. Oh, fine, OK. Yeah, and, just... uh, I didn't let it put me off. Uh, clearly. <laughs> and actually, no, it's the best treatment. It's a good active outdoor How life. big is your vineyard? Well, we've got uh, 24 acres of, yeah. of, of vines, which is about 24,000 vines. Gosh, and all from scratch? All from scratch. We planted this um, in 1989. And, uh, we was, being... My wife and I, we dug the holes, we put the posts in, we put the wire up, we thoroughly enjoyed doing it. It was a labour of love to do it. <gasps> I've still got the old grainy film of us doing and it. You're doing it. Few, but yeah. what? Because you're winning awards now with well, it. Well, there's one of them there that's just won the best sparkling rosé in the world in Italy, in Verona, for the second year in a row. Is that this one that's here? That's that one. It's the best in the world. I mean, we sparkling wine, which we can't, of course, call champagne because it's not from champagne. Well, we call it Cornwall because we're from Cornwall. What a good idea. I'm allowed to taste it. Yeah, I'll go straight do, to yeah. that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Straight yeah. to the yeah. award winner. Yeah. Yeah. But it was third Thirsty about those fires, John. Sorry. Can I, yeah. Yeah. Can I join you? Yeah. Come on, here you are. Yeah. Have one of those. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. yeah, I'll bring one over in a minute. Keep it on. Just uh, taste the product. 
Oh, my goodness. I can see why you win awards. I'm rather reluctant to put it down. I just have to take... <laughs> I'll bring you one over, Clippy. So, what happens now, then? I mean, how much are you bottling now? In terms well, of you? we average about 100,000 bottles a year. Um, <clears throat> it depends on the weather. It's very, very... Um, dependent on flowering yes. in June, July, as you, as you know, as a gardener. But this must be a roaring success then as a vineyard. Well, it is. I mean, we, we've, we try to keep our feet on the ground. Our aim is to produce more and more mm. quality, not more and more quantity. Enjoy our way of life. That's why we went there in the first place, not mm. turning to some corporate... Um, Isn't thing. this the difficulty then? I mean, it's the same for John, I guess. Well, is, is, is staying within your success, as you might say? The temptation must be to expand and expand and expand until it probably either doesn't work anymore or somebody takes you over. Well, I think this is why we're all standing here in the middle of this economic crisis. You know, people expanded into oblivion for no good reason. Yes. And we, we want to expand our quality all the time, get better and better, make better and better wine, but keep the amount we make the same. So how many vines now, just to remind me all 24,000. 24,000. Yeah. Who prunes them? My wife prunes it all of her vineyard. The whole, the, the wine that um, John's drinking was pruned entirely by my wife and my son, who's a winemaker now, he yeah. made this anniversary sparkling brute for her and she won a gold medal in the national competition. Well, I think she's a, a star. And you brought this and you I said... I brought your vineyard. That's a vineyard. That's a vineyard. I thought it was looking a bit pre-global warming, your garden. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you very there. much. I've got my vineyard. I'll come <laughs> back for that. Bless you. Wonderful. I'm taking this glass over there because finally I'm about to meet Michelle, Michelle Clippy McKenna of Clippy's Apples. There you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, Clippy's apples, but clearly lots of jars here containing Clippy's apples. Tell me the story of your business then. What happened there? Well, it's one of those, it's a bit like a, one of those eureka moments. I was trying to find something to do with my life and I wanted to help protect something. I love cooking. Yeah. And driving down the A56 in Manchester, very salubrious part. And um, I was like, apples. I'm going to do something with apples. I want to protect I want it to really was them. a road to Damascus it was, no, it moment, was, yeah. wasn't it? I'm going to do something with apples. <laughs> I phoned up my fiancé and told him, I'm going to make something with apples. I have no idea what I'm going to do, Yeah. but that's what I'm going to do for my There are jars chosen. over here now. Yes. Um, so this is what you do these with are apples. My, these are my little babies. Now, <laughs> there might have been your little babies. This is a big success story. Oh, so how you. big is your empire now? Well, we started four years ago with my apple trees from my back garden, two yeah. apple trees, and then obviously neighbours' apple trees, and then Cheshire orchards, yes. and then just went from there, really, and then launched... We started off in farmers' markets and festivals and delis. And, and you now sell to Fortnum and Mason, Harvey Nichols and Tesco. Thank this you. This is a heck of a success story. <laughs> this is wonderful. Uh, just oh, with the British apple as well. Oh, with the British apple. You're making thought? something yes. here. I mean, because what I want to talk to you about making this is also, what would you say to other folk who say, I want to go out on my own? If you can give a key little secret of success, what would you say? I would say that whatever your heart and your gut tells you, yeah. do it. Do it. Absolutely. Just, just go for it. Because I think the whole, I think our country, we're brilliant at doing things. Yes. But I think sometimes we just get a little bit scared. And we're not and I, and good I pushing ourselves no, forward. No, and I don't think... And I think we should. Yeah. I think we're amazing. This country is the best country in the world. And I think we should be proud of what we've achieved. Well, I think and we're I think, all proud of what you've achieved with... I mean, we've got bananas and chocolate in here. Yeah, chocolate, bananas, amaretto. Amaretto. Gets even better than apples, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> all apples to make the career out of one idea and one, two apple trees in your back garden. Yeah, and definitely. And John and his logs and Bob and his wine. It shows you can do it if you want to. You can. Bless you, rural entrepreneurs. My thanks to John, Bob and Clippy. Thank you very much. Thank you.